Okay, how's everybody doing? So isn't this a handsome looking wrecker kit? So this is Showcase Miniatures 187 scale wrecker and it is just a bomb of a kit. Like I just really loved building this. Uh, they're a little bit different than your traditional uh, injection molded plastic kits. But who else makes one? Like nobody else makes a 187 scale wrecker kit that I'm aware of. And over a period of a couple of weeks and a few hours each evening, I was able to turn this out and I, it was a pure joy to build. It really was. So if you're looking for a, a wrecker for your model train layout or your diorama, Showcase Miniatures is that. Like I don't think anybody else offers a kit of this caliber and quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into the review following this and I'm going to cover as much as I can on the whole build from the start to finish just for those that you know maybe might be considering one of showcase miniatures mixed media uh kits and they're just really really nice okay and just for those of you that are wondering um i picked up my copy at otter valley trains they have loads in stock they carry most of their products uh here in canada so if you're looking for one try out ovr trains okay so what I want to do here is I want to talk about this Showcase Miniatures HO Scale 187 Brig or Brigadier 9500 Wrecker. Um, this is a mixed media or multimedia kit comprised of resin, two-part resin, white metal, and photo etch, and a little bit of clear poly vacuum form for the window, but they also give you the option with some uh, laser cut styrene. So let me first just say that this is a really cool subject. That's what got my attention. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of multimedia kits, although I've built a few in the past. Um, they do require a little extra skill or perseverance to pull them off because they require different adhesives and some cleanup and uh, you know different media, which doesn't favor solvents. So you don't. So there's no chemical bonding here. It's all going to be mechanical bond with CA and epoxy. Okay. And what I mean by that is, is I've talked about that before in the past, right? Like CA is a mechanical bond like this, right? Solvent is chemical bond. It fuses together, it welds the plastic. So you can't really weld resin to metal and you can't weld metal to metal or resin. Okay. So these are the two adhesives that you're going to need to build a mixed media kit like this. Medium CA is good and five minute epoxy. So a couple of things I had when I first looked at the kit uh, that concerned me, but I was able to remedy it. And I'll tell you why, because this is important. When I pulled out the, the uh, Wrecker platformer bed here, it had a bit of a twist in it. Uh, maybe it was pulled from the mold early through production uh, process. I don't know. Like I understand that. Like I've done this type of model building. Um, you know, building up a, a beta model, so on, going through it all, and then pouring and, and creating molds and stuff. So I've been there, done that, mostly on a larger scale. So I understand that. Uh, and the way to fix that is, or the way I fixed this one was, I just took a coffee mug with, and just boiled some water, poured it into the mug, let it settle, and then just dropped this in for 10 or 15 seconds, and then dropped it on the bench, and it just straightened out on its own. And that's usually what will happen with resin. It has a memory. If the plug was straight... If the mold was level, uh, it, it'll generally go back just because once you soften it, the tension, everything settles out. Straightened up, laser straight. So, um, you know, there is some kind of, uh, you know, there's a uh, air pocket hole right there. You know, that happens with RTV molds and uh, silicone molds and so on. Uh, but that's not going to be seen. So, you know, like you need to clean up a little thing. There is some flash on it, but it's, you know, it's minor stuff if you're a modeler, right? The cab turned out pretty good too. Other than there's a few, there's a line, a bit of anomaly in the mold here with the line on the door that I, I thought maybe that's something they might want to look at that because they did say in their instructions, let me point it out. Okay. Uh, please let us know of any suggestions or ideas you might have to improve our kits. So to improve your kit, maybe, you know, revisit the uh, molding process of the cab because there is some anomalies there. Now you can scribe that as a modeler, that's fine. But if you mess it up, it it's not fun to try and re and re-resin. It's easier to do, 
styrene plastic but resin can get away on you but uh, it's pretty good overall and once it's painted and built up it should be pretty good uh, the photo etch is really nice very nice indeed uh, it's of of, of uh, similar quality or equivalent of any model ship photo etch or armor photo etch I've dealt with in the past or aircraft uh, very good they have a really nice you know GMC the front grill the checker plates fantastic the mirrors just really nice touch that like that's what will really make the model pop then there's this too which I've already built and I'll show you that in a second there's the whole front end assembly well it's not scale but it's articulated okay and uh, they give you that option so that you can make it functional which I really like and then they give you a laser cut window glazing which is a nice touch they give you a little vacuum form plug you can use if you want which I probably won't use they give you little lights. The features are cast clear of the light options. Uh, the, the tires are pretty good for white metal. These are This is quarter inch tube that I'll just paint them on. Okay. So they look pretty good. The tread detail on them is pretty good. They look the part, the period part. And they even give you a little dolly rack too, which I was impressed with. So... Yeah, overall, the white metal casting, the boom, the wrecker, it's all pretty good, you know. Um, the one gripe I have is with the way the leaf springs don't line up to the frame. Okay. So I had to squeeze them, like, to make them fit tight on the frame because they have little notches in there. And the journals are the leaf spring hard point journals or whatever you call those. They don't match up well, so I had to bend them inward so it's a tight fit. You can pack that out if you want, but I wasn't into that. And you won't see it anyway. And they didn't give you a drive shaft that I see, but you can easily use a piece of evergreen 40 thou rod, and that's what I did here, just to add the drive shaft in. Then here's the, the brass photo etch articulated steering. See that? Isn't that nice? You know how these trucks look with the wheels turned? It just gives them an extra character look to them, you know, when you turn the wheel in a bit, you know, so you can do either or. Or you can bend them too, just on the fixed straight axle part. But with this here, you got to cut off uh, the, the hubs. That was a little bit fiddly, and then there were pins on here, and I mucked up one side, so I took all the pins off, and I drilled holes. And then I ran 40 thou rod through plastic, and then just melted the ends, like a rivet, like I do with door handles on HL scale doors. And I melted the other side, and that's how I assembled this here, so it tightened it up nice. Just, just with a lighter, and you just press down on the end, just leave a sixteenth and melt it down. And don't worry what it does, it just flattens out and you can clean it up, you don't see it anyway. But it sure makes for a nice tight steering assembly. Okay, when you replace the metal pins, which are these little puppies right here, which I find too cumbersome to try to make functional. Okay, so it's pretty good that way. It's a, all the potentials here for a really nice build and uh, to produce just a fine looking Brig 9500 wrecker, okay? Okay, so I just want to insert this just before I move forward into the build coverage. I did use the term briefly, sort of coverage, but I decided as I began to build this kit up, I began to realize that it's just too great an opportunity to let go, to not super detail it. So, because it has so much potential anyway, you know, um, just due to the rarity of the subject matter and just really the overall quality of the kit which I think is quite good and the potential to improve upon it is even better so uh, what I did was is I tried to cover as much as I could uh, in the following tutorial it's a bit lengthy I hope you don't mind but uh, you don't always see reviews extensive reviews on these kind of things so I thought well, here was a good opportunity to do that and you can see some of the work I've done so far which I cover all of this subsequently okay Okay, so I just want to point something out, a little tip here, when you're gluing uh, photo etch, brass or stainless, whatever, to another media, like in this case, two-part resin. Now, remember how I talked about before that it's a good idea to sand, to rough, to score the surfaces uh, before you glue? It just helps the adhesion rate. It just helps to create that mechanical bond, right? You know, that I talked about? Um, when you do that, be careful, though, because if you sand the back of a piece of this photo, it's just 
more more notably stainless is it'll tend to bow in the opposite way so what I did here was is I just took a tool like this and I put a little bit of a just a little bit of a curve bend in it back and forth like this just to get a little bit of a curve like that because when I glue it down I don't need to put glue near the edges like I don't want glue sandwiching squeezing and oozing out right of this checker plate when I put it on the deck so I can put a just a bead of glue down the center of the concave center of this bend that I introduced here okay this is a little tip that'll tighten all the other edges around it so when you push it down you glue it down it's like a spring okay and it'll fit tight like the edges all around okay Okay, so just to be clear, I just want to put a bead of glue down the center here. That's it. Not, don't, not on the sides. Otherwise, you'll end up with a mess. Okay, that will be impossible to clean up. Okay. i use some medium CA here. This is how I'll probably be assembling all the photo etch. And I'll just use a small pick. For the smaller pieces. There you go. See how clean that is? Okay, so I just want to point this out as well. So if you do run into a situation where the photo etch is lifting a bit, like right here, see? You just take some super thin CA, which is the blue bottle. Super thin. And we'll just wick in a little bit with a pick. like that okay you don't need that much of this stuff and I think we all do that now and again we oftentimes we use a bit more glue than we need on things I've certainly been guilty of that in the past and, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what my dad said to me one time when I was 10 years old I was building a model kit and I remember it was a Harvard at Texan I remember it 172 scale I think by Airfix and I showed it to him, you know, Dad, look what I built. He said, boy, did you use the whole tube of glue on it? <laughs> I never forgot that, so I still think about it. Anyway, so that went on pretty good, eh? That looks really good, that checker plate on there. It's going to make for a really nice record deck, that. So with this particular part, you can CA this, but I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, mix a little bit of epoxy. Well, no, I don't think I want to use that. I don't want to get any epoxy on that checker plate. And I think what I'm going to do is just clean that up a bit more of the file. And then some medium CA probably. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that goes on.
Okay, so now I want to set up the booms, and they're a little bit tricky, and I'll tell you why. Because they're on a certain angle, and the pulleys on the top point of the boom sort of converge on an angle, on a compound angle. And so if I try to epoxy these in one at a time, you'll never get them to line up right when you do the, the next one. And you might have to bend it and break it. And I don't want to use CA for the boom to the deck. So what I've done is, why do I not want to use CA for the boom to the deck? Well, because it has no shear. And this is complete shear force here. Right now it is, like until I get cables on here and stuff. So I would rather put a blob of epoxy five minute for the, for the base where the pins are that go into the checker plate deck. This I'm going to CA, and what I'm, I've already done it, the two bolts are lined up perfectly there, and I'm just going to take a little bit of CA and just put it on the top of that uh, coupler block, like just in front of the pulley there, okay? And then I'm going to take a little 2x3, in this case, number 8203, just a little piece, and I'm just going to lay this on top of there like that, just to give it some strength, okay? Just a little brace. Come on. That way, when I lift that off of there, it'll hold together better. And then I can take it off as one unit. Well, it'll be self-aligning now, and I can put five-minute epoxy. Right. I'll use to glue the boom base down to the checker plate deck. All right. So you see how I'm using CA and epoxy. Where there's a lot of shear, I want to use epoxy. Where there's really little shear, CA works fine.
Okay, so here's some of the fun part, right? Uh, please don't ask me where I got this chain from because I do not remember. It's probably, it could be a bit in my box for, I don't know, a decade or two. Who knows? It's, I'm sure you can get it from model ship detail companies. Like just, you know, so many crossovers, right? With fine scale modeling. But uh, anyway, I have a little piece of it left and it's already nice and black. So I don't have to blacken it. But anyway, a little tip for you when it comes to... Uh, threading the needle so to speak with small scale chain like this and in this case this cotton thread I take the end like you know the end of the thread will look like this it'll be frayed right even when you cut it like you'll never get it threaded through the eye of a needle so to speak if, if the eye of the needle is like this so what I do is I take a bit of this wick a bit of CA on the end of the thread And just soak it and then just twist it in your fingers it'll dry quick and then just take a knife and slice off an angle like that and then you'll end up with a piece of hard thread on the end like this so you can put it through okay and you end up with that and then what I'm going to do with this Is this little clevis that I made here? Just gonna thread that through. Tie a knot. Good old granny knot, right? And it's from all my ship rigging days. I remember that. So there, I can put a spot of CA on there. So that'll just double as a little cable link or whatever. And then what I'll do is I'll run that over that notch in the bar there. I'll, and I'll cut that chain off. I'll run another thread in, and then I'll thread it through that hole that I drilled previously. Pull it tight, put a spot of CA on it, and then boom, and I'll have a nice tight chain on the wrecker. Like that. It's a, Okay, so for the Riker cables that go to the sling bar, I'm just going to use this thread here. It's just a tiny bit heavier than the other thread. So it uh, seems to work pretty good. And then what I do is I just shred it and wrap it around the, the, the pulley here a couple times. Like that, see? Just thread it through. And then I'm going to pull this over the top here, take a dab of CA, medium CA. Put it inside the track of the wheel there. Pull that tight. I'm going to do the same for this one too. On the end of the boom. Right there. And I'm just going to pull it onto the other side of the sling bar. Like that. So it pulls it tight. Pull it over the pulley there so it pulls it tight over the sling bar. And then just clamp it off with a bit of weight of this tweezer. Just let the weight of the tweezer hold it tight.
Okay, so I just want to show you how to drill a delicate hole here. Uh, in this case, in the sling bar that goes on the back of this record deck. Now you can just glue it to these, see these little hard points or journals or whatever, or brackets, whatever you want to call them, that are welded onto the back here. So they sit between here. Now you can drill these out. You can drill out these uh, very carefully if you have a nice sharp little drill bit. I'll just show you here. And you're careful. Jeez. Um, and you're careful about it. So that way you can pin it if you want, right? Like this is the fine scale thing, but um, sometimes it's nice to do that because when you go to glue white metal to resin, it doesn't hold very well. It's just the nature of the two materials, right? So uh, I want to drill two holes in this bar because I want to put a tab on there with a hole in it where I can tie the cable to because it's the way it is on the prototype. I don't believe there's an actual big heavy rubber sling on this. I mean there may be but I didn't see any in the photos. And I just want to show you how uh, you go about drilling a tiny hole like this. Okay. It's not that difficult really. Um, I'll show you how to get it started. So I just take a block of wood like this, clamp with a C-clamp onto my little cutting jig here that I made up that most of you are familiar with. And then I just take a number 11 blade and I just ream a, a starter hole like that first. It's just easier. You can see it better and control it better. And the tip of the blade seems to start the hole well and this is a soft white metal right and then you just chase that little hole with the appropriate drill bit and there you go Okay, so here's a little bit of a reason for my madness. <laughs> Why would he go to the trouble to drill little holes like that? You know, and there's just, nobody's going to see it anyway. Well, true, but some do. And this is a really good example by doing this on how you fasten parts properly, like in the museum culture. Like, they'll never accept a model that's been like a metal part C8 to resin. Why? Because if you blow on it, it'll fall off. Okay, so if you want to attach another different media to a resin or metal, in this case plastic, let's say, well, you can see here, so I drilled a hole, right? See this plastic? So this is 20 thou evergreen plastic in a 0 0.5 millimeter hole that I drilled, and it fits in there perfectly, right? Like almost snug. You'll find with 20 thou it varies. It'll be thick and thin, but it'll be pretty close. Okay, and then also notice the 0.5 millimeter brass rod here in the same hole, see? So it's pinned. That's what they call pinning the part, right? The mixed media part. So you can use that to have a part to be movable if you want. Although I don't like movable parts because people want to move them and when they move and when you move them, they break eventually, or get broken. Um, but that's how you would fasten, let's say, in this case, you can see where I drilled out these receiver blocks, or journals right here on the back of the wrecker, see? Very carefully. And you gotta be very careful with uh, resin, because it'll break. That's another reason why I don't normally like working with resin, but in this case, a kit like this, uh, they're second to none if they're done properly. Okay, so that's one way you can do that. You can just glue that on there if you want, or you can drill that out and have it so it's functional and pinned, or just secure it in place without it being movable. Okay, you can use either plastic or brass. So now you have a good rigid connection or adhesion in whichever version you choose, right? To the actual resin part okay now I can add parts furthermore like let me just give you a quick diagram so if this is metal this this piece here white metal and just say you want to glue a 
a plastic tab with a hole in it at any scale right like not just HO well the first thing that's going to happen if you blow on that is this this plastic piece here is going to break off from this metal piece when you use CA or epoxy it doesn't matter so what are you going to use to fasten this plastic to this metal piece how are you going to do it well you drill a hole into this metal let's say this is white metal right you drill a hole and either put a brass pin in there and solder your tab to it to the pin first and then slide it in and glue it or you put in a plastic rod into the metal and then just use solvent to glue the plate onto the plastic with this plastic being tacked in with a spot of CA but it's pinned that's the proper way of building a mixed media or multimedia model when you're trying to merge resin two-part resin to metal or or even other plastic for that matter okay